Many of you asked me to share an experience of somebody who matched in anesthesiology. Unfortunately, I'm working with one of my friends who matched this year at the Harvard Anesthesiology Residency Program. Andres, can you start by introducing yourself to our viewers and giving highlights of your experience starting from medical school to matching at the Harvard Anesthesiology Residency Program? Hey, Maki, thanks for the invitation and I'm happy to, to be here to talk about my experience, my journey and, and to give some advice and recommendations for the future applicants in anesthesia. The first thing that I would like to mention is there are different ways to approach the process in anesthesia. The first way, the first pathway is by doing research and, and at the same time preparing for the USM examination. Uh, the other pathway is to start preparing for the USM examination after um, graduation and then uh, just try to make some contacts and networking. So I decided to take the first pathway. I was in medical school during the third year so I decided to apply for a research elective. At that period of time, I wasn't sure that this was gonna be my ultimate goal, and I just wanted to get involved in research and make some contacts and networking and, and to see um, how the process uh, was supposed to work. Um, so I applied and I was fortunate enough to get accepted, and I came across with wonderful mentors in Hopkins, and, I spent six months, and during that period of time, I attended biostatistic classes, epidemiology classes, and, 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 and since then, I was able to, to create my own research ideas. And, and that's the first point that I would like to highlight. It is critically important to leave a very good impression and to leave up the expectations. And I think that a very good way to do that is by proposing new ideas and developing your own research projects. And never wait until someone else come up with your ideas. And I think that if you ask me how can I get new ideas, the only way to get ideas is by reading articles and keeping updated uh, from the literature. After those six months, I prepared for I prepared myself for the first USML examination. I took it. I took that step between the uh, between the fourth year and the fifth year of medical school. And then I just came back to my country. I finished my clinical training. And, and in the last year, which is the internship in my country, I applied for uh, six months of clerkships. And uh, I completed my, my clerkships in Hopkins, Well Cornell Medi Medical School, and, and also in Boston. Um, and, uh, and after that period, I was looking for new research positions and I came across with another mentor in Houston. He proposed me the opportunity to uh, to do a postdoctoral research fellowship, and that's the position uh, that I accepted. And, and fortunately, uh, I've been having a wonderful experience here in Houston. Just to wrap up the first question, um, I just want to summarize that it is critically important to create your own research ideas to proactively interact with uh, the U.S. medical doctors. And I think that I left a very good impression on my mentors when they saw me uh, proactively uh, engaging in more research, and my own research, and developing my, my own research analysis. Andres, you actually took a different route than most medical students do. Me personally and most of the medical graduates I know, they choose to do research after they finish their medical school. I think doing research during your school gives you one extra advantage regarding time. Because as you know, publications take time from the time you submit them till you get the revisions, till they get accepted and get published. So if you chose to do research during your medical school and you went to do research for six months or a year and then came back to your school, these papers that you worked on during research, they would be published by the time you apply. Well, if you chose to do research after you graduate, you would be applying by the time these papers are accepted, are in revision or published. So this is one advantage I see for doing research during your medical school, which is these projects that you worked on, you would have more chance of getting them published by the time you apply. The downside I see for doing research during medical school is the connections. Because if you started research in your third or fourth year, and then went back to your country, people might start to forget you or the connections might not be as strong as somebody who is currently working in the lab. But Andres, you actually did something different. You did research during your medical school and you went back and continued to do research after you graduated. So you kind of combined both. There is advantages and disadvantages for each. Some students actually cannot 
take time off their medical school to do research. So if you have the opportunity, for example, in summer to come to the States and do research, that's amazing. But if not, you can choose to do research after you graduate and there are amazing outcomes from both pathways. I also love the idea that you brought up, which is bringing new ideas, always trying to be proactive because you want to stand out in your research, in your clinical rotations, and people like innovative people, people who bring something new rather than just follow orders and do what is asked. However, it might take some time to start developing your own ideas. For me personally, it took me around three to four months to start formulating my research questions. But this is an advice for everyone who's planning to do research to start thinking of what could be a good project, start having your own ideas and suggest it to your mentor, and they would guide you and tell you which one is a good project and which is not. And now I wanna ask you about the question that I get asked about the most, which is the USMLE step scores. What are your thoughts about the USMLE step scores when applying for an anesthesiology? So with regards to the scores, I think that uh, the first thing that I would like to mention is that uh, that's not the whole application. You should also keep in mind that a very strong application is a, a conjunction of different aspects, including letters of recommendations, networking, research, uh, mentors, clinical rotations in the U.S. before graduating, uh, observerships as well. And, and and also a very good portion of that is the score. The U.S. English Step 1 is uh, typically recommended to be around uh, above 235 for anesthesia. However, just keep in mind that every year this specialty is getting more competitive. Um, so probably in the future, the average should be, should be uh, around 240. Um, and for the this Step 2 CK, the, the, the cutoff uh, tend to be around 245 and in, in, in other places could be around 250s. Um, so, so that's like pretty much everything about this course. Uh, most programs receive around 1,000 to 2,000 applications every year. So you can you can imagine how difficult it is for program directors to select applicants for interviews. Um, so they have to, to, to take into account the scores initially to filter out the applicants, and then they can select uh, the applicants more easily. Uh, other programs also tend to see the whole application. So just to summarize, I highly recommend a very strong USMLE Step 1 score around uh, 235-240 or above and a very good Step 2 CK uh, around 245-250s. I agree with what is said regarding the value of the USMLE Step scores. Although they are important and you should work hard and get the highest score you can get, but they are only one aspect of your application. So try always to have an overall good application including your research experience, your US clinical experience, your personality and fit within the program because these are also extremely important when you're applying to residency. Now coming back to research, why do you think research is important and how did it help you when you're applying to residency? Yeah, so I think that when it comes to research, that is a very nice way to attract mentors and to get some more networking in the US, particularly for those who haven't had any contact at all in the US, so that would be a very good start. In my case, for example, I started doing research and I came across with a couple of wonderful mentors uh, who also gave me very strong letters of recommendations, uh, apart from the ones that I got from my clinical rotations. So just to summarize how important is research in anesthesia, I would say that research can give you uh, very good mentors, uh, can increase your networking, that could also be helpful to to, to get into a research position in the US. And ultimately, there are some programs in anesthesia that are opening uh, special tracks. For, for example, research tracks, also emergency medicine tracks and critical care medicine tracks. Uh, so I highly recommend for those who wanna pursue a research career in anesthesia, and if you, have, if you feel that you have very good chances because of your background in research, I, I encourage you to apply for the, for one of those tracks. There are different programs who offer those tracks. Uh, so just check it out and, and, and see if you are eligible for those tracks. And my final question for today is, are there any unique aspects when applying to anesthesiology residency compared to other residencies? So I think that some of the unique aspects of anesthesia when you're applying for residency is the importance of having good networking and excellent mentors before applying. I think those are the key things that make an application stronger compared to other ones. 
Uh, you should also keep in mind that anesthesia is a very clinical specialty, so just make sure that you have at least one or two clinical rotations in the U.S. before applying. Uh, you can have access to these rotations before graduating uh, as a medical student, uh, which is known as clerkships, uh, or you can also apply for observerships if you already graduated from medical school. The other aspect is the importance of having good US and at least step one and step two CK scores above 240 and 250 respectively. And lastly, I think that letters of recommendations and research experience, those are important things that program directors, re directors usually see in an application. Uh, so I think that just to summarize, to wrap up the, the, the key things in an application for anesthesia is first of all, networking, mentors, U.S. clinical rotations, uh, step one and step two CK scores, letters of recommendations, and lastly, research. Thank you so much, Andres, for sharing your experience. It was a pleasure having you on my channel. To our viewers, if you found any value in this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified whenever I post future videos about the residency match experiences, the USMLEs, or research. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on my social media platforms, Instagram or Twitter at Malki Asad or my Facebook page Malki Asad MD. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos. Peace.